Panini and this is my Terraria building series where I am joined by my cursed sapling Charky and my wisp Barnaby. Anyway, since this is my first episode, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I've been playing this game since 2011. I can't say that I am an expert of it. I mean, yes, I did explore and I did fight off some bosses, but most of the hours I spent on this game included building or digging and I've only showed my works to my friends before and I thought hey we're making a gaming channel why not put Terraria in there and make some kind of building tutorial thing since I do love building and hey if someone learns from me and they take some of the tips I put in this video and make their own works from that oh my god you know I could even learn a lot more techniques from those people. Anyways, the goal of this video isn't just to teach people, it's also to teach myself. While making these builds, I get to experiment about different kinds of block combinations that I've never even thought of before I've tried this project of mine. So anyways, we are building roads and subways because I am aiming to make my own urban city here in Terraria and I am gonna show you my process. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Fun. Let's do this. First, before we go on ahead with the lessons, these are a list of items that you probably should have in your inventory before you start. You can craft some of these things, but I realized that some of these things are kind of late game. And so if you are anything like me and just want to build stuff, but you're nowhere near late game, then I suggest you use this map called the Builder's Workshop, which was made by Tell from the Terraria Forums. The link is at the description and if you appreciate the work she did to compile all these items in just one map, tell her thanks in the forum. Now if you don't want to use that map, you can use inventory editors like TerraSaver and Terraria in the edit, in the edit, whatever, I don't know how to say it. Anyways, let's start. Okay, first off, we're gonna make a horizontal layer of asphalt blocks. And to be honest, you don't actually need it to be asphalt at all. You can do this with any other block because we are going to paint over it with shadow paint anyway. But I preferred using asphalt blocks because they actually make you run faster in case you don't want to use your cart. So that's kind of a bit of a preference. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put stone slab just below the layer of asphalt blocks and I put five layers for it because we're going to need those layers later when we make the subway. Now we're gonna place the minecart tracks just above the asphalt block. Please don't mind the color, it's just temporary. After that we're gonna put some granite wall just behind the minecart tracks. You don't actually have to use granite wall as well. I mean, I just picked them up because they were the closest texture to the asphalt blocks. Even though you can't really see it because, you know, it's gonna be painted shadow paint. I'm just a little nitpicky about it, but you can basically use any kind of wall for this one. After you're done with that, we are gonna use the granite platforms and put it just above the granite walls. Now this does a good job of masking the unevenness of the wall that you used and it also looks really really good as a sidewalk. Let's paint the asphalt block and the minecart tracks with shadow paint. So now it's pitch black. And there you have it, you've got yourself a road basically. A road without it looking like a railing. Now to make the sidewalks look even more like a sidewalk, let's paint it gray, just like so. Now the road actually looks good enough as it is, completely black, but if you want 
a little bit of oomph, a little bit of style, we can paint road lines with white paint. It's actually here that the rulers become really really helpful because now you have a way to even out the spacing. And in this one, I used four spaces each. But later on, I made the lines shorter so it would be two blocks each. And there you have it! We've got a road and a sidewalk! Okay guys, on to the subway. First, we're gonna put a layer of sandstone bricks just below the stone slab layer that we made. And then, we're gonna paint it gray. This layer kind of acts as some kind of breaker. So it won't just be full of stone slabs and I guess it's kind of like a style. Next we go to the walls. Now I said that I used dynasty walls, not adamantite walls for this one, but when I first made this it was originally adamantite walls, which you can use. It's a very very good alternative actually. So I'm gonna show you how it looks right there. Now we're gonna put the railings. The ruler is also very useful in this one because I want to have five spaces above the railings. It's going to be important that it's five blocks high because we still have the platform and the lights to consider. So that much space is important. And I know that the minecart tracks are silver to begin with but I still paint it over with grey because there are some bits and pieces of it that's colored brown, which kind of represents the wooden part but I prefer it to be completely grey. Next I'm gonna put some copper plating below the minecart tracks and I've painted them grey and I'm using the paint sprayer this time. So when I place it, it's automatically grey. And then I put two more layers of stone slab just below it to complete the look. You can add more than two if you want. Now for the lighting, I wanted it to be uniform in spacing as well and this time I didn't use a ruler and now you can see why I also chose to use copper plating for the layer just below the minecart tracks. That will actually serve as my ruler. I spaced out the lights after every fourth segment. So I'm gonna be digging over here and I'm gonna be lining it up with the sandstone brick before I place the glass lantern. After I completed the basics of my subway, I decided that adamantite beam wall, while it does look really really good, I thought it was a bit too shiny. I mean, if you think about it, the texture of glass and the texture of adamantite beam wall are almost similar to each other. So I thought maybe I needed a more rougher look. And I didn't want to use stone slab walls for this. I wanted it to be a different kind of wall without any kind of segments or patterns. So I decided to use the dynasty walls. The first dynasty wall I used was the blue one and I painted it gray. And it looked good but seemed a little too light for me. So I decided to use white dynasty walls and painted it black. So now it's a nice dark gray color. Then, as a breaker or a style, I put a grey brick wall lining just behind the minecart tracks. Now this is just an added bonus in case you actually want to make a sloping or diagonal subway. Now before you do this, you have to know that it's gonna look a little jagged because of course the blocks, even though you can slope them, you can't slope all of the blocks especially the ones inside. When you make slanted subways, it really does help if you have a ruler. So you can count the number of spaces in between. Horizontally, there was five spaces between the ceiling and the track. That's the same spacing you have to have when it's diagonal. Now to count the spacing, you actually have to count it diagonally as well. Horizontally, it's just one layer, but when you do this diagonally, you're going to have to add an extra block so it won't look too thin 
and you can actually extend the road diagonally as well but in this case I have other plans for this part of the road so I'm just gonna keep it as is for now. Let's put in some copper plating painted gray then we're gonna hammer it down so it slopes. Now of course we're also going to slope the ceiling just like that and then we're gonna be putting some walls and as you can see you can't slope walls no matter how much you want to it's just gonna be jagged and for me it's okay i guess but if the jaggedy wall kind of bothers you maybe you're better off without the gray brick wall line now the placement of the light is gonna be kind of tricky because since it's diagonal you can't really see the segments now so this is where you really really do need to get a ruler or if you don't have a ruler item in the game you can always do what i did back then and actually until now sometimes i still do it i took an actual ruler or a tape measure and placed it on top of the monitor so i could measure it and as you can see there are basically 11 spaces in between the two lights now by using the ruler it's actually easier to measure the diagonal spaces so you can see where you're going to place the light just like that there we go that looks good and now we've got a subway For the automated street lights, I took the liberty of putting the street lights or uh, rather the lamp post in advance. The main thing I wanted to teach you guys over here is the wiring. I actually did this wrong so many times and I didn't know why. So before I show you guys the proper way to do this, I am going to first show you guys the wrong way to do it. First what I did before was I put a logic sensor night just below each of the lampposts and I used the wall to cover up the background of the block and connected it with a wire and I also painted the logic sensor black so it just blends in with the stone slab. Now I did this with every street light and so you can imagine how long that took me to do. But what happened was the lights did went on during the night, but the lights didn't turn off during the day. It turned off the very next night. And after some research, I realized that it sends a pulse, or rather toggles the switch on and off, only during the night. But it doesn't turn it off during the day, which I wanted it to do. And for that to happen, I actually needed to put a logic sensor day as well. And since those are basically two logic sensors for each lamp, I decided that maybe a unified wiring system for the whole street of lamp post is probably better than two sensors for each lamp post, like what I did before. And in this version, which is the correct version, with the night sensor and the day sensor, I also put in a lever to the left and this acts as some kind of emergency power thing. You know, in case I wanted to switch it up, that's a whole lot better than what I did before. And just a quick tip, I really suggest that you place the lamppost during the night because when you place lampposts, they're automatically activated and since what we wanted was for the lights to be activated at night and off during the day, it's better that it's activated during the time that it's supposed to be activated. So there you have it. Those lampposts will now turn on during the night and turn off during the day. I hope you guys find this video really helpful. I know it's not exactly the most impressive kind of build like the ones they post in the creative compendium or blogs on the internet, but 
I'm really really happy with what I've done and it is one of the fun things I've done in Terraria and I just wanted to share it with you guys. I hope that this still helped someone out there who's wanting to make a build just like this. And hopefully I'll be back on Wednesday or Thursday depending on which side of the world you are in with another video and hopefully it will be about this one. So you guys do your thing and I'll do my thing and I'll see you guys later.